Hello McKinley, Instructor Pamela here. I would like to review a few things uh, within your current uh, coding course here. First off, please ensure that if you are sending me emails, I cannot res um, respond back to certain students because they blocked me. So if you haven't been receiving any emails from me, it's because I cannot because they're blocked on your behalf. So just ensure that you have any blocks uh, removed from your email list so I can respond to you. Um, first off, I would like to reference the ICD-9 and the ICD-10. Some students are asking about the uh, purchasing of the book. First off, we're still working on ICD-9, so within the course, we're going to be using the ICD-9 because that's what's current. The um, reason why we're not in ICD-10 yet is because of the transition has been a little difficult for many healthcare facilities throughout the country to ensure that their um, computer-based programs are communicating um, with the, the new ICD-9-10 characters. That's the biggest change that we've seen. We've watched the ICD-9 codes go from numeric um, digits with up to five digits and two after the decimal. But now the ICD-10 has seven characters and they have alpha in them as well. So for example, diabetes in the ICD-9 code might be the 250.00. For the ICD-10 code, it'll be a new code and it may be, let's see, say C123 um, decimal 456. So the characteristics in themselves are changing. But either way, as a coder, you have to know how to use all the coding systems. So it doesn't matter if you started coding with the ICD-9, it's basically the same way of how you have to understand the guidelines of using the books, the references, and searching for your disease first and the body part. All of that stays the same within the ICD-9 book. So again, only thing that changes is the physical characteristics of the codes. So I hope that helps um, as far as what books to use. If you only have an ICD-10, we can still work it out and we would just have to find your codes in the ICD-9 uh, version. Or if let's say you have the ICD-9 and you need to uh, do the ICD-10 codes, you would search for the ICD-10 codes. In the field or at your job, we have the crosswalks. So everything's in the computer system. So when you type something, it may give you the ICD-9 code, but in the system it's going to convert it to the ICD-10 code. And that's what we're experiencing as far as issues in the field of why we haven't transitioned yet to ICD-10. We're thinking about maybe just transitioning to ICD-11 because many other countries are already operating ICD-10 and get ready for the ICD-11. So we just have to keep our ears open, listening to the government as well as um, CMS and um, basically the healthcare world to see when we're actually going to transition to the ICD-10 or the 11. Okay, so that was the, the main things that I wanted to communicate with you as far as the ICD-9 and ICD-10 and um, as well as your emails if you're sending me any emails. Keep in mind again with coding. We have inpatient coding and outpatient coding. Depending on the positions and the jobs that you apply for will determine what codes you will be using. As a student, you learn everything up front for educational purposes. But when you get to your job, it's going to be very streamlined. And you're going to know what you're going to be coding because you're going to be applying for the position as well as interviewing for the position. So there won't be any surprises like you may experience now when you're doing your homework, studying, and even taking the exams. So with that being said, always ask yourself, who am I coding for? And that will help navigate you of how and what service codes and diagnoses and diseases you're picking up. But you always need to know that you always need a diagnosis code from your ICD book that states the diagnosis, let's, let's say congestion heart failure. And then if you're here for an outpatient service for let's say an electrocardiogram, this uh, facility that performed the electrocardiogram will bill that and then the congestion heart failure. That's an example of an outpatient claim you always need your diagnoses and inpatient and outpatient claims. Now, if you are an inpatient hospital coder, you will use the volume three and your volume one and two codes. And that's it. An outpatient, you use all of the other CPT and HCPCS codes. So, thank you very much for listening as always. Until next time, Instructor Panel here, journey well.